Well, without the lights coming on, I see we have a French angel left. There's naso tang, blue tangs. There's the huma huma. A little uh, cold tang. Oh, doggone it. There's our uh, harlequin tusk. And unfortunately, that's the golden butterfly there in the background. Uh, without turning the lights on yet, uh, I can't tell if we've gotten ahead of the game yet or not. So um, let's go ahead and turn the lights on and see what the situation's like. Well, the lights are on now. We can see a number of fish that are still swimming. Unfortunately, the harlequin tusk didn't make it. And I'm really sad about that uh, golden butterfly. He had been through so much just to get to this point and then to be wiped out by ick is just really heartbreaking. Um, this is kind of the fish, the French angel, that I've been using as the monitor through all of this. And when I say monitor, what I'm referring to is how they reacted. Uh, to the medication. If you recall in the very beginning I said I suggested uh, that the applications or dosages of the medication be done in what I called half dose increments. In other words if it said 10 for every uh, 10 milliliters for say every 100 gallons of water my suggestion would have been do 5 milliliters per 100 gallons twice a day. Uh, you still reach the same level you just don't do it so quickly I guess would be the word um, and the problem with quickly is that the fish don't tolerate all those uh, applications of, of heavy medication so uh, I've learned for sure in the past that if you do half doses for pygmy angels they'll tolerate the much higher levels but if you hit pygmy angels up right away with the full dosage they'll usually die uh, this tank had quite a bit of fish in there uh, big values and I didn't want to uh, bomb the tank originally so again I took a more cautious route which again would be um, half dose increments. Now my mistake um, was about midway last week I thought I had reached what I considered a therapeutic level. I could see uh, that the ick was decreasing so I did not add any more at that time. The following day I returned and unfortunately it had advanced which would have been on Saturday and that's what prompted me to come Sunday morning to um, start uh, dropping the salinity in the tank. So I mentioned funeral services. What I usually do is take those fish and place them around the base of trees or plants or flowers. That way as their little body decomposes, they can still carry on some value, not only in the sense of what we paid for them, but in the spiritual sense, uh, the value being at least fertilizer for the trees or the plants. Uh, it's just another way of extending that, that, that soul uh, that was taken from the ocean, or should I say born in the ocean, and expired in the aquarium. At least I can get some continuation out of that. So based on the fish that are left and how they look, I do believe that we've finally reached a therapeutic point. There's a definite decrease in the visual aspects of the ick on the remaining fish. And I have to assume that uh, prior to this, the, 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 the ick was just too much for some of those other fish. Uh, the remaining ones are either um, much hardier, more able to tolerate the medication or the ick, or once again, I think we may have uh, uh, reached a therapeutic point. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is begin to drop the salinity a little bit further. And so the process for dropping the salinity obviously involves removing salt water from the tank, in this case another 30 gallons, and then we'll replenish that with 30 gallons of fresh water. So we've extracted 30 gallons of old water out of the tank. Before we start adding more fresh water, I'd like to get an idea as to where our salinity is. I've got two different hydrometers here, which unfortunately give me two different readings. 
This one appears to be reading the salinity at 1.022. This one here appears to be at about 1019. Uh, I've also got this floating hydrometer, which I'm going to take a measurement. And to make it convenient, I've actually just used the tube. I carry the hydrometer in as opposed to floating it in the aquarium and trying to keep track of where it's going and try to get an idea as to what the salinity here is. Uh, for camera's sake, it's not going to be easy, but let's see here. Well, you can't see it, but the green band is just underneath the water level, so I would say 1019, 1020. So all three of them are relatively close. 1019, 1022, and let's just call this 1020. Um, I don't think I'm out of whack on salinity that much. Was I high the other day? I would be surprised if it was much higher than 1023, 1024. And again, that's based on these three hydrometers. Of course, you're going to ask me, where's the refractometer? And that's what Scott's asking. Well, to be quite honest with you, I hate the refractometer. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I had purchased a refractometer years ago and began to use it. It took a little bit longer than just dipping the hydrometer with the needle in the uh, aquarium and getting immediate reading, but it seemed like the high-tech way to go and I'd held off long enough, so I purchased it. Now, a refractometer involves you using some purified water, preferably distilled, to calibrate the unit in the beginning. From there, you can then go ahead and do uh, a test to determine what the salinity is. So I thought I had that under control. I went to a service account one day and I lent the fellow my hydrometer. When I returned next time to pick it up, he had made a comment about how he had recalibrated the hydrometer for me. Well, that kind of made me question, was there something I did wrong originally calibrating it? Um, did the water that he used, was it different than what I had used to calibrate it? In other words, my point is that not just the refractometer, but all those electronic instruments that ask you to, to, to calibrate it to something else, the results are only going to be as good as the calibration itself. And if you're calibrating it to two different numbers or two different people are calibrating it to two different starting points, how valid can that be? Anyhow, I'll test some of this water. I'll take some home and I'll test it with the refractometer because to be quite honest with you, I didn't have time this morning to, to deal with it, so I didn't bring it along. Um, but we'll take some water home and we'll test it. Based on what I see now, the salinity was not the issue with regards to what caused the ick problem in the tank. So there's three remaining questions. One is, what caused the problem? Number two, how to more effectively deal with it in the future? And number three, how does low salinity help the situation? Well, I'll start with number three. As with a freshwater bath, as you drop that salinity or put that fish into an environment that has a much lower salinity, it's going to have an effect on him. And that effect is going to start first with the smaller creatures as opposed to the larger creatures. The idea being that you'll affect the parasites on the fish before you begin to affect the fish. So in this particular case, as opposed to the actual freshwater bath, we're simply dropping the salinity so that eventually, and it depends on how far down you go, eventually it will have a benefit to the fish. Aside from that hyposalinity benefit, what you will find is the fish will begin to feel a little bit more comfortable because not only in a saltwater environment are the fish always having moisture sucked out of them because of the salinity environment around them, but at the same time, those parasites are dehydrating the fish. So as you bring that salinity down, it's easier for the fish to maintain um, his, his, his water balance or, or water consistency. I can't think of the word at the moment, but again, as you bring that down, uh, it equalizes it so that the effect of being dehydrated by the parasites is not as great. Would you like to reduce your nitrate and phosphate as well as algae problems? Consider the Turbos Aquatics LED Algae Scrubber line, which consists of the L2, L3, and L4 models. All units include 
dual drain system, slotted pipe, growth screen, bulkheads, and dual high quality growth spectrum optimized LED lights and heat sinks. The L-Series algae scrubbers are easily installed and externally mounted either above the aquarium or placed over your existing filter system. Control aquarium nutrients naturally using algaes. For more information, visit turbosaquatics.com. Hi there, my name's Jim Stein and you know me as the LA Fish Guy. Well, I also wear a couple of other hats. One of them is the jellyfish tank called the Jelly Aquarium, and the third is myfishtank.com. I offer an entire line of acrylic aquariums ranging from rectangular to hexagon, flatback hex, as well as the custom curve front aquariums. There's also an entire line of stands and canopies ranging from MDF to pine to oak with a variety of different finishes available. And the website is even smart enough that you can calculate what the freight and crate charges to your location will be. That's myfishtank.com. He's so widely known in the aquarium industry that newly caught fish ask to be bought by him. He set up aquariums for customers 20 years ago. Those same customers still ask for him by name. He doesn't feed the fish. They bring the ocean's bounty to him. He is only second in line when it comes to making purified water. The guy ahead of him is in the Bible. He is the most interesting fish guy in the world. I don't always make DI water, but when I do, I prefer Spectra Pure. Stay pure, my friends. Receive a $50 LA Fish Guys discount on a Spectra Pure Max Cap 90 five stage RODI water purification system. Just call or go online to SpectraPure.com and mention or enter LA Fish Guys coupon code LAFMAX50 to receive your LA Fish Guys $50 discount. Now it's possible to resolve a parasite problem by dropping the salinity way down. But I mean, seriously, you've got to be down around 101.2, 101.3 before that low salinity really has a distinctive benefit as far as eliminating the parasites. What we're doing in the meantime by dropping the salinity, as I said, is making the environment a little bit more tolerable for the fish so they don't seem to be as dehydrated. So the medication, which is basically copper sulfate, what I've used in the past is the CCAM Cupramine. I've always had really good luck with it, and I have no questions with it at this point. My only real question is, would there have been a more appropriate way to have dosed that as opposed to the half doses that I went through? So if you follow me here, the instructions for the medication suggest one milliliter of the copper medication per 10 gallons of water. So in a 400 gallon tank, that would be 40 milliliters of copper sulfate. As I said earlier, I've found in the past that hitting the fish up with a full dosage tends to be a little bit strong. So what I've done in the past, this started off with half dosages. In this particular case, it said one milliliter per 10 gallons, which again would be 40 milliliters. What I did was added 20 the first day, followed it up again the second day with another 20. Now it's taken me two days to accomplish what the directions would have said in the beginning that would have taken care of it in one day. The directions then say wait another day and then do another full dose. So theoretically, according to the directions, that would be 80 milliliters of copper sulfate put into the tank over the course of three days. Well, in my particular case, I added 80 milliliters of copper sulfate, but I did it in the course of one, two, three, four, five, eight days. Now, did that take too long to raise the level? So was it possible that I took too long to get the level up to a therapeutic point? 
It's possible I was going at a slower pace, but that was because I have some very expensive fish in the tank and I really didn't want to kill them right off by over medicating. The reality is this, that medications are simply controlled levels of poison and you have to try to determine at where that level is tolerable. In this particular case, some of the fish were more susceptible to it than others and some of them dealt with it better than others. And as I was monitoring the fish, there was a point last week where I thought I could see it tapering off of the development of the parasites. So I didn't add any more medication at that point. Maybe I should have gone just a little bit more because as it turns out, those parasites did ramp up and kind of have a second wave towards all those fish, which caused me to not only come out here and medicate on Saturday, but to come out and do that water change and additional medication on Sunday. So timing is a lot of it but you've really got to feel comfortable in what you're doing. And again, my hesitation was watching the big angelfish who were hiding in the back. I felt that they were tolerating the medication as most as they could. And yet, as it turns out, I've added more since, so they could have tolerated it a little bit more. But again, it all comes down to how you and how comfortable you feel putting medication in the tank and how the fish are responding. So now the third question, what caused the ick outbreak in the tank. This tank's been running for a little over two years. I've had very, very good luck with it. I might have dosed up once or twice with some Praziquantel trying to deal with some flukes on the eyes of uh, some of the angels. Now, granted, I've lost some fish over time, but nothing that rampaged the tank, nothing that spread to the tank. Uh, the tank has a refrigeration unit on there. It's set to run between 78 and 80. You don't hear the chiller running now. The tank has been within those parameters for the whole two years. As I mentioned, this tank has run quite well over that period of time. I will say two things though. Uh, last week, or should I say the week before, was that hot spell here in Los Angeles where the temperature for about a week was 95 to 105. Uh, is it possible that that had some influence on the tank? The chiller, again, ran between 78 and 80. Maybe that, that outdoor influence uh, caused the temperatures to rise back up much quicker. Maybe it caused the refrigeration unit to have to work harder to bring that down. Ultimately, the high and the lows were much more extended than they normally are. The second thing is, there's a Huma Huma trigger fish in this tank. Now, he's made it all the way through all of this and he has no real issues on him. Ironically, he was in the tank upstairs and that tank has crashed twice. And what's even more interesting is that tank upstairs when it crashed, also crashed during heat spells here in Los Angeles. The tank upstairs has no refrigeration unit on it at all. And as I mentioned, he's been through two of those tank crashes upstairs and now the one down here. Is it possible that that Huma is either carrying with him or very easily stressed out uh, by temperature increases and for whatever reason uh, he broke out on a little bit of ick <clears throat> and in turn that spread to everyone else in this tank because in the two tanks of the two crashes upstairs uh, we lost all the fish both times and he was the only survivor and so for the third time now he's been involved in a, a parasite situation and he seems to come out unscathed. Is he the source of the problem or is he just uh, able to deal with uh, situations that were beyond his control? I don't know, but I do know that it was again during that heat spell last week that this tank broke out in ick. Uh, I've tested, be, uh, tested after I started adding the medication for ammonia and nitrite. I came up with the tiniest little bit of ammonia which could be misconstrued as the lowest color on that color range chart, uh, and there was no nitrite in the tank either. Uh, so I don't think it was necessarily a biological situation. Um, I really think it had something to do with the heat. Now there is one other thing I will mention, and that is this tank started out with 10 Heniocus butterflies, a large school of butterflies in the tank. Over the course of the last two years, that school of 10 has decreased down to one. And now that remaining butterfly, along with the three double saddles and the golden butterfly, are all gone. So I don't really know what caused the situation. And a lot of times you can beat your head against the wall trying to figure out what causes it. 
and the only advantage of that is, is if you can see what it is, maybe you can try to prevent it from next time. Uh, I think the, the main thing is to try to concentrate on how to resolve it. And unfortunately, we know how to resolve it, and that is the introduction of medications on a prompt basis would be the only improvement that I would make in this particular case. So we've fed the tank here. They eagerly ate some of the flake food, and now they're feeding a little bit on the um, frozen foods. I've cut back on the amount of food overall. I don't need to be uh, causing an ammonia problem if the fish are not going to eat it, but um, the remaining fish do seem to uh, enjoy what food there is in the tank. And it's also a good sign when the fish are still uh, eating or have an appetite. It's when they stop eating is when you have to start uh, really getting worried because then there's a real problem in there. Now the one fish that you haven't seen today, and he is in there, and that's Big Mac. He's the uh, maculosis. He's the biggest angelfish in the tank. I have seen him down at the far end. Uh, in fact, maybe we can uh, get a little bit of a glimpse at him. This is his uh, favorite area down in here. And you don't see him down there, but I have seen him in there before. So he's still with us. So uh, sadly, all the big, or I should say, uh, with good faith or good uh, wishes, the, all the big angels are still in there. Uh, the big tangs are in there, but um, we lost all the butterfly fish. Uh, there is a clown trigger fish that has disappeared. I've not seen a body yet. And of course, then there was the harlequin tusk. There's also, um, there were five percula clownfish in there. There's only two in there now. So with that all said, we've accomplished uh, another 30 gallon water change with straight fresh water. The intent was to drop the salinity. Uh, we have an idea as to where our salinity is. At the moment, I think it's just a case of making it more comfortable for the fish. Uh, but if we continue to drop the salinity, at some point it will become beneficial in regards to uh, eliminating the parasites. So today is Monday. I'll be here again tomorrow. We'll follow up with the fish once again, and we'll uh, once again do another 30-gallon water change and drop that salinity just a little bit further down.